I tell you, kids, back in my day, in 1892, we had it so rough, or so much better, I can't tell anymore. Anyway, every day we would wake up at 2 in the morning and go to the table for breakfast. We all lived in a closet, you see, so it was one room, and, we'd, and we would ask, me and my 64 brothers and 27 sisters, What's for breakfast, Mum? She would all smack us with a shoe and say, Cold beans! And if we complained and said, But we had cold beans yesterday, because we had cold beans every day, she would smack us all five times with a shoe and say, Tough! It's all we can afford! I'm trying to feed the family of 93 with just half a silver buckington. You see, a silver buckington was about the same as half a penny back in the day. Then we would head to school. Met up with the Johnson kids from down the road and walked 1,674 miles to school. On the way to school, we had to walk up a mountain so tall it, ex it extended out to outer space. When we got to the top of the mountain, we would see the Peterson boys on their fancy bikes, which they don't make like they used to, and we would race them down the mountain. Then when we got to school at four in the morning, the headmaster would come up to us and say, You bloody kids are late! And then he would smack us all with the cane ten times and tell us we had seven years of detention. Then we went to class and Mr. Stevenson would say, Okay, line up kids. Then he would spank us all each 60 times, then hit us with a cane 40 times each. Then it was 7 at night and we had to walk home. Then when we got home, we'd ask, What's for dinner, Mum? And she'd smack us each 50 times with a pen and say, Rotten cabbage. And if we complained, she would smack us each 100 times with a broom and say, I'm trying to feed the family 154 and just one islet silver. Just you wait until your dad gets home. Now an islet silver was worth about as much as a grain of sand. Then, when our dad got home from his job at the soot factory, he would hit us all 180 times with his belt. If we had been bad, he would hit us all another 600 times. Then, at 158, Mom would say, Okay, time for bed. Then, we got into our potato sacks. And then, she would hit us with a shoe eight times before we went to sleep. On Saturdays, we went down to Uncle Bob's farm to work. We would have to walk 345 miles to the train station, then catch the Route 4 train for 56 stops. We would get on the train and pay our fare of three teddy roses. Now, a teddy rose is worth about the same as a flake of skin. Then, if the ticket inspector came to us, he would hit us all four times with the baton. If any of us had lost our ticket, he would hit us all ten times again and throw us off the train. And we had to walk the rest of the way. When we got to the farm, Uncle Bob would drive us to the gate in his tractor, hit us all 780 times with his crowbar, tell us to get into his trailer so he could drive us to the farmhouse. Then we had to plow the fields with the toothbrush and the blazing summer heat. Now, they don't make summers like they used to, so it was about 1,345.4 degrees Spencer, or, you know... 67 degrees centigrade using your newfangled metric system. Then we would have to milk the cows. Now, they don't make cows like they used to, so each cow weighed about uh, 459 hogsheads, or 3.2 tons, in your newfangled metric system. If you touched a cow's udder, it would kick you and you would die. So you had to be really careful when you milk the cows. Then when we were done, Uncle Bob would say, Okay kids, time for your pocket money. And he would give us each nine copper jamayas, which are worth about one political promise each, and beat us each six times with his tractor before we left. On Sundays, we would meet with the Johnson boys and go down to the river. Now, they don't make rivers like they used to, so this river was about as wide as the whole of America and as deep as the Marianas Trench, and it was filled with liquid tungsten. <laughs> We would play by the old oak trees near the river, climbing on it, and building tree houses and such. Now, they don't make trees like they used to, so this tree had a trunk as thick as the city, and was tall enough that the branches on the top could scrape the moon. One day, little Jimmy fell from the top of the tree. When he hit the ground, the only bit of his body we could recognize was his left eyeball. We picked up all his bits and rushed him to the doctor's surgery. Dr. James said, Oh, it's just a scratch. Don't worry, I'll blast her 
on it and you'll be all right. And he gave little Jimmy a plaster and a lollipop and he was okay. After we finished playing by the river, we would go into town and get some candy. And back in the day, you could give the shopkeeper one bronze winglet, which is worth about as much as a cigarette butt, and he would give you the entire stock of the store. So we would go and get our candy, and we'd go into the town square and eat it. Now, we didn't have any of your fancy food laws back in the day, so there were all kinds of stuff in our candy. You know, bleach, lead, ecstasy, you name it. So, we would always get a little hyper after candy. One day, when we were hyper, we went up to Mr. Boris's car, the only car in town, and touched it. As we touched it, we saw Dad storming down the street, holding his belt. You kids having fun while I work all day at the soot factory, just so you can have grilled water for tea every night. I gotta smack you all. We were sure he was going to snack us, but then he said, No! I got a better idea! I'll take you to see Mr. Henderson! It was such a right. Now, Dad had told us about Mr. Henderson. Mr. Henderson was a veteran from the Great War, where he got a really bad injury, but we never knew what it was. Dad walked us all down to the pub, and we saw a left hand propped up on a pipe leg. Mr. Henderson! said Dad. I have some kids here who need a good weapon. Then Mr. Henderson picked up the entire pub and hit us each 4,006 times with it. Then Dad said, Right! I gotta get back to the sun factory! You kids run on home now! Now, by now, it was 1 p.m., which meant it was curfew. While we were walking down, while we were walking out of the town square, we heard, it, we heard a man shout, Ay, 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 ay! You bloody kids, it's curfew. Turned around and saw the constable holding his baton. He hit us each one, six, zero, two, six, five times with his baton. Then he put us in the gulag for six, zero, one, two, three, eight, six, five years. Now, they don't make gulags like they used to. This one had, uh, what was it? Five mile thick steel walls and a sink hole in the top to let in, to let in some light. We were there for about one, three, five, two, six years. Until the mom baked, until our mom baked the constable some cardboard pie so he would let us out. Then she hit us all 1,292 times with the washboard and grounded us for the rest of our lives. And we liked it! And this happened every day. So, don't come complaining to me about not being able to breathe or not being able to feel your legs, or if your arms fell off and your legs and you became limbless. <laughs>